Greetings Earthlings, today we're looking at another handheld dynamic microphone. The microphone we're reviewing today is the Lewitt MTP250DM, which is a stage dynamic microphone. If you want to get your grubby mitts on this thing, it will cost you only around $80. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for this review, I have the microphone connected directly to the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen. My gain is set just at around 4 o'clock. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may have to boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. Of course, you are going to get the microphone. You'll get a microphone clip, which does have a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a zippered storage bag, a foam windscreen, some kind of Lewitt bracelet, and some documentation. Then as far as the build quality, it feels pretty on par with a bunch of other stage dynamics. It has an all metal handle as well as a very sturdy feeling metal mesh grill. It weighs in at around 335 grams. As you move around the microphone, there are no buttons or switches because this is the switchless model. And if you are interested, here is what the microphone capsule looks like. Then as far as the specs, this microphone has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 60 Hz to 18 kHz, a sensitivity of approximately negative 54 decibels, and an impedance of 280 ohms. Now I am spinning around the MTP250DM to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. We'll continue around the microphone to 180 degrees, show you what it sounds like from the rear, continue around the microphone to the second 90 degree angle, and then rotate and end at the front of the microphone. Because this is a handheld dynamic microphone, I will pass it back and forth between my hands to see how it does at rejecting handling noise. Now we'll test the plosive rejection of this microphone. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now let's see how the provided foam windscreen affects the tone and the plosive rejection of the microphone. So right now I am speaking into the microphone a few inches off without the foam windscreen and here is how it sounds and here is how it rejects plosives. And now I am at the exact same distance with the exact same gain setting, but I have installed the provided foam windscreen and here is how the tone of the microphone sounds and here is how it rejects plosives. Now I am right on top of the MTP250DM to show you the proximity effect on this thing. Three inches off of the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here is how the audio sounds. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And now for you elite gamers, I am typing on the sad W keys. Here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room. Now I want to do a quick comparison between the MTP250DM and a bunch of other handheld dynamic microphones. So right now I'm three inches off of the Lewitt and here is how the audio sounds. Now I am speaking into the SE Electronics SEV7 about the same distance which is three inches off of my mouth with the exact same gain setting but I may have to boost this a little bit more in post so check the doobly doo but regardless this is how the SEV7 sounds in comparison to the MTP250DM. Because you need to hear how the Lewitt sounds again, this is what the Lewitt sounds like again to make it easier on your ears and you don't have to jump around. Now I am on the classic Shure SM58 with the exact same gain setting about 3 inches off of my mouth and here is how the microphone sounds in comparison to the Lewitt. I bet you didn't guess that this was going to happen but we are back on the Lewitt and here is how the microphone sounds and now here is what the next microphone sounds like coming up right now. Next, we are on the very popular $100 microphone, the Sennheiser E835, three inches off of my mouth, exact same gain setting, and this is how the audio compares to the MTP. 
How do you like the comparison? Cool, we're back on the Lewitt so you can hear how this sounds before this next microphone comes on and you can compare this audio to that audio. Now I am speaking into the Rode M1, three inches off of the microphone with the exact same gain setting. Make sure to check the doobly-doo to see how much I boosted it. But regardless, this is how the M1 sounds at the exact same distance with the exact same gain setting. <laughs> Why can't I just test out microphones all day? I don't want to have any more bills to pay at all. Well, if you'll take a second and sit down, kids, let me share something with you. I am what some folks would call a risk-averse person, meaning risk scares the crap out of me. YouTubers do not have health insurance. That is why I do not do this full time. Okay, at $80, I think this is a pretty awesome microphone. And first up, in terms of pros, this mic has some really nice clarity to it, which makes it very easy to understand what is being sung or spoken into the mic. Also, the roll-off in the lower end, which begins at around 200 hertz, makes it relatively forgiving if a singer doesn't have the best mic technique and ends up eating the microphone. Yes, it still does have proximity effect, but it's not as overpowering. It also did a really good job at background noise rejection. The build quality feels very sturdy, so I wouldn't be concerned with using this on stage. And something that I didn't mention when I was walking through the build quality, the microphone mount has a thumb screw on this side. Unlike pretty much every other microphone mount, which you need a screwdriver to adjust it, this makes it incredibly easy to loosen it and adjust the microphone stand on stage because I don't know any singer that goes on stage with a screwdriver in their belt. Really nice addition, very straightforward, and I don't know why other mic companies have not done that. Good job there, Lewitt. And then in terms of cons, the microphone did suffer a little bit from handling noise, and also the microphone was not the best at rejecting plosives. It does have the roll-off though, starting at around 200 hertz, meaning although there will still be plosives picked up in the recording, they won't be as boomy or rumble your subs as much. So what are my overall thoughts of this microphone? On the electric guitar, I thought it was pretty decent, although the low mid bump around 400 hertz was not my favorite. And also when I got up to the upper register of the guitar, I did find the sound to be a little bit piercing. Then on the acoustic guitar, I did find it tolerable, but by no means was it my favorite. I think the 200 hertz high pass filter made it a little bit too thin for my personal liking, and also the 400 hertz boost wasn't something that I thought was very appealing on the acoustic guitar. Next up for singing, the microphone is very clear and detailed, and the low mids and bass frequencies are incredibly unobtrusive. And in the higher frequencies, it sounds like it has somewhat of a, a sheen to it. Does that make sense? The top end is just very prominent, and it captures a lot of interesting detail of the voice, as well as a lot of detail of your mouth, of your mouth noises and all of that. And lastly, for spoken word, I would describe the microphone as very modern sounding, meaning I hear very little to no nasaliness when you compare it to something like the 58 or the SEV7 or the Rode M1. Now, don't get me wrong, the mids are still there. 
They just aren't as prominent as they are on microphones that were designed in the 60s and 70s. And this microphone also has a much more prominent treble and air frequency in comparison to these older mics. So would I recommend the MTP250DM? Absolutely I would. I think the tone of this microphone is very different from a lot of the competition like the SM58, the V7, the M1, or other mid-forward microphones, and it is much more comparable to a microphone like the E835. But with that being said, I think the 250DM has a slightly more robust low end compared to the E835, as well as a much more pleasing upper frequency range where it has less sibilance as well as less of a top heavy quality to it. So if you're looking for a brighter dynamic microphone, then I think this is a really nice sounding option, especially if you were considering something like the E835, because to my ears and in my opinion, I like the tone of the 250DM a bit more, and it's 20 bucks cheaper. And there you have it. So if you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down. If you're still here, make sure to go over to podcastage.com slash giveaways because you can win some free stuff. Very cool. If you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you next time. Bye.